Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to the July Ambassador Briefing. We're so excited to have you here today and talk about our federal and state updates and so August recess planning for next month, which is just right around the corner. Uh, we are really excited to share with you some updates and are, are really thankful that you chose to join the call today. Uh, throughout the briefing, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A feature or in the chat feature right in your WebEx browser. Uh, if I don't address them immediately during the presentation, we'll take time toward the end to address them in full. So today, uh, our speakers are myself, Julie Eller, Manager of Grassroots Advocacy, and Michelle Guadalupe, Director of State Legislative Affairs. And we're really excited to bring you this update on our policies in our federal and state spaces and kind of move forward in making sure that we have opportunities to advocate for arthritis on both fronts. Uh, to kick us off, let's start with an overview of what we'll talk about today. Our state and federal updates, number one, our August recess leadership initiative and August recess broadly. And then we'll talk about our July, August, and uh, ambassador activities. If this is your first ambassador call, Welcome, we're so excited to have you here. Uh, and if you are available, please stay on the line at the end of this call. At 3.30, we'll start our new ambassador orientation. And if you're not a new ambassador but would like to stay on the line as well, please do. We're always happy to have a welcoming committee on that little part of our call and to make sure that if there are any questions that you have and you want to ask them there, that you have the platform to do so. So thank you again for joining us. And we'll kick it off today with a quick federal affairs update. Um, so for our federal affairs update, um, we have two main items that we want to talk about with you today. The first is our drug pricing blueprint comments that we submitted on July 16th. Um, so our team, our federal team, has been working to prepare comments to submit to the Department of Health and Human Services around drug pricing uh, for probably the better part of the past two months, and we've been working to collect resources and stories and data points around how keeping the patient perspective at the center of policy decisions is always the best way to move forward. And so we submitted our comments on July 16th, and our letter particularly emphasized that drug pricing and affordability deeply impact people with arthritis and that these are key issues to making sure that we are able to build a better world for all patients, especially those impacted by arthritis. Uh, so we talked about different trends in the, the policy landscape along the lines of biosimilars and biologics and pricing broadly, and we really sought in each of our uh, comment areas to make sure that the patient perspective was valued and heard every step of the way. So that's our first big federal update. And our second update is around accumulator adjustment programs. And we've been talking about accumulator adjustment programs over the past few months with our advocates and our ambassadors like you. Um, but if you're new, if this is your first call, an accumulator adjustment program is a new emerging policy that's being used by insurers and pharmacy benefit managers to change the way copay assistance is applied to your deductible. Um, essentially, right now, in many plans, or let's say last year in many plans, uh, copay assistance was uh, when you were paying with your copay assistance to buy into your prescriptions or your therapies, um, and that payment was being counted toward your deductible. So as your copayment assistance ran out, you also met that deductible for your insurance plan. And then by the time you're, or close to by the time that your assistance ran out, your insurance kicked in and would start to cover the cost of your, your medication. Now, uh, accumulator adjustment programs are being used by employer-sponsored plans and high-deductible health plans primarily to change the way that that relationship looks. And instead of allowing copayment assistance to count toward your deductible, it isn't counting at all. Uh, so we're finding patients all around the country and families all around the country who are experiencing a switch that was made to their plan without their knowledge uh, about how an accumulator adjustment might be used for them. So people on expensive biologics are all of a sudden running out of their copayment assistance, but having to pay into their full deductible. They have to take on the full cost of their drug after their copayment assistance runs out, but before their deductible uh, 
starts to pitch in basically before their insurance starts to take over for that 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 payment. So this is an issue for patients with arthritis and patients just broadly in many spaces. And in the past month, we hosted, we're on a steering committee that's helping to raise awareness and sound the alarm around these accumulator adjustment programs in different patient advocacy groups. So we had a Twitter chat just this month on the 18th, a week ago today, uh, with many different patient advocacy organizations. Everyone from hemophilia to HIV AIDS to cancer support, we all got together and we shared patient stories around accumulator adjustment programs. And we're really excited to say that with your help and support and raising awareness for the chat, contributing to the chat and sharing your personal stories, we were able to reach 3.3 million impressions online. So our tweets were seen 3.3, over 3.3 million times. That's an amazing thing. We reached over 300,000 unique Twitter accounts, and that's over 300,000 unique individuals who interacted with, read, or saw these tweets. Um, and we talked a lot about on our last advocate call, which was about Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month, we talked a lot about how much awareness can make a difference and how that really is the tipping point for how we can interact with making change happen in our communities. And so our accumulator adjustment programs, which you guys helped as a part of your ambassador activity for this month to promote and to participate with really helped to raise awareness around accumulator adjustment programs. And we're looking to see more and more of these programs be um, highlighted as uh, issues for patients and, and the ways that we can address them uh, really being elevated among our uh, resources and, and with our patient advocacy partners. With that, I'm going to give one more teaser about this accumulator adjustment program and what we're doing about it. Uh, just this month, just this week, we sent out letters to each of our 50 insurance commissioners, along with our other patient advocacy groups that we're working in coalition with, um, to express our concern, our shared concern around these accumulator adjustment programs in the hopes that we could help raise awareness with those decision makers as well. And Michelle's going to talk a little bit more about that in just one moment. Uh, so these are our federal affairs updates. And if you have any questions, again, just pop them in the chat or Q&A, and we'll address those toward the end of today's briefing. So for state affairs, I'm going to pass it over to Michelle. Great. Thank you, Julie. Um, I always like to make sure that we share with you um, kind of how our department is um, is organized. We are led by Anna Hyde, our Vice President of Advocacy and Access. Julie Eller was speaking. We have a great um, team in DC and out in the field. Um, you can see that we have our state directors, um, Stephen Schultz, Pam Fields, Mary Bartlett. On the next um, slide, you'll kind of see where their territory is. Um, so if you ever, uh, you know, have a question, you need anything, make sure that you are in communication uh, with your state director. Contact information can be found there. Um, you can always shoot uh, Julie or myself an email as well. Um, you'll see in the southeast that, that there is an open position there. Um, Please make sure um, that I that you send any information to me if you have any questions. Uh, we definitely want to make sure that all of your your questions are being answered. Um, so again, that's kind of our where we're, where we're at with our leadership team, and just really excited when we get to connect with all of you and just continue the great work that you all have been doing. I um, wanted to go through just a couple of updates for July. Um, this was an, an incredible victory in Alaska. It had been um, in the makings for the past um, couple of years. The Arthritis Foundation was uh, was was very involved in providing testimony and letters and just really keeping, you know, the education going up in that state. So congratulations to Alaska. Um, Alaska is now our 45th state to pass biosimilar substitution um, legislation. Julie was talking a little bit about the accumulator adjustment program, and um, it, it was uh, it's, it's a newer initiative for us, um, and then really reaching out to our insurance commissioner. And we had sent this letter out on Friday, and we've already received um, multiple responses from our insurance commissioners. Many of them are engaged in this issue. In this issue. But one constant feedback that we are getting from our insurance commissioners is that they need to hear 
from patients. Um, so I can't you know, emphasize this enough. I know Julie has talked about this in past ambassador briefings. If this isn't, you know, if any of our um, legislative issues, you know, happen to yourself or if you have friends or family, make sure that you connect with us. We have that great story banking um, opportunity for all of our different issues. But they kept on saying to us, we need to see, you know, how is this impacting, um, you know, patients in Alaska or Illinois or whichever state it is. It, it is. Um, so just want to kind of reiterate that that is we're hearing that directly from our insurance commissioners. Um, so the accumulator adjustment program, the outreach we're doing with insurance commissioner, that's just one piece of the type of outreach that we're doing with insurance commissioners. They are very, um, you know, they're, they're great partners to have in the states, and they really do want to hear from patients if there, if, you know, if, if any issues are happening, whether it be uh, with these accumulator adjustments or if it's step therapy, prior authorization, any of those cases. Um, so we really want to strengthen our relationship with those important um, folks out in the states. That kind of leads into um, what we're doing with our new initiative surrounding the state of your health. Um, and this is, uh, you know, on the website. Uh, definitely, you know, check out um, any of these materials. Um, the next slide really talks about our victories that we've had all across the country, which is fantastic. We're on our road to 100. As you can see, we've had 97 state victories since 2014. And really, with the State of Your Health project that we are doing, we want to make sure that, you know, these victories have happened. We want to make sure that everyone then knows um, and educate folks, on, okay, now that these laws are, are in place, what does that really mean for me as a patient? Or what does that mean to my, my friends and family? How out can I make sure that we get the word out that these laws are in existence? We want to make sure that patients um, know their rights and that they are able to get the medication, if we pass, especially if we pass these laws. And also, we want to make sure that they know what to do in case uh, you know, the law isn't being um, followed. And that's really where it comes into play with our insurance commissioners, really forming those relationships. So we're doing a lot of the, you know, getting that set up. Um, but we definitely will want ambassadors to help us in this process and help us with these relationships, especially if you're having those personal stories that you could share. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michelle. Appreciate the thorough update on state affairs and everything from our accumulator program to state of your health with our insurance commissioners. We really do want to activate our uh, advocates and ambassadors to really use those as feedback. And I want to plug one more thing here, um, is that we have story banking opportunities available in our Action Center. And each of those story banks are issue specific. So if you, I'm going to go back to this map for one second. Uh, if you are experiencing any of our uh, key pieces of, of policy uh, that we're focusing on. If you're experiencing an uh, access to care issue in any of those spaces, we have a story bank that will help you craft your story and share that with our team. And after you've shared that with our team, it'll direct you to share that as well with your insurance commissioner. So if you're nervous about making that first step and reaching out to your insurance commissioner, feel free to reach out to us first through those story banking links, and we can help coach you in how best to then share that with your insurance commissioner. Uh, so thank you so much, Michelle. And now we're going to change topic a little bit and shift into talking about August recess, our ambassador activity, our uh, key ambassador activity for any ambassador year, and the final activity of our uh, ambassador season. Um, so we are going to talk about August recess and all of our different ways to engage in this program for the next um, month. So earlier in your ambassador newsletter that you would have received this month, we sent out our legislative guide for August recess. And the August recess legislative guide contains everything from a information and introduction to the August recess program. August recess is the time of year when our elected officials in Capitol Hill are returning to their home states to meet with their constituents and hear from them about what's important to them and how they can move forward in helping to progress that agenda. Now this year, uh, uh, we know that our senators have canceled their um, August recess. And I used air quotes around canceled because it could very well come back into play this August. But 
Our goal is to help set up meetings with members of Congress and their staffs in district in your home state to share some of our priority legislation. So whether that's a representative, a member of a senator's in-district staff, or um, a member of any of your member of Congress's in-district staff, we have some tools and resources for you to make it easy and possible and doable. So we have three pieces of priority legislation that we're focusing on this year. They are the same of, as our, our Platinum Ambassador legislative asks from our assembly. Um, and we've added one more as an alternative in case your member of Congress has already signed on to support any of these other measures. So we have our first one, which is to reform step therapy through HR 2077, the Restoring the Patient's Voice Act. And that helps to address step therapy on a federal basis. And I know we've talked about it before, but this is particularly cool because it's the first federal bill that's ever uh, sought to address that issue. Um, the next is our Ensuring Children's Access to Specialty Care Act legislation, which is in both the Senate and in the House. Um, this particular piece of legislation is especially important this month as it's Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month. Uh, this bill seeks to address the pediatric rheumatology shortage by encouraging and incentivizing people to pursue uh, pediatric rheumatology and other pediatric specialties through loan repayment programs on a, on a national level. Our third is to join the Congressional Arthritis Caucus, and that's our ever-present ask that we are always hoping. We always want to strengthen our Congressional Arthritis Caucus and invite new members to join. And if your members of Congress already support these issues, well then, we would like to ask them to sponsor the Patients Access to Treatments Act, PADA, which is a bill that helps to rein in out-of-pocket spending on specialty medications. So our guide goes through our legislative asks in full, but it also helps to provide you the step-by-step -step guide to scheduling a meeting with your member of Congress's office, to learning those asks, as we said before, preparing for your meeting and understanding what to bring and what to print out and how to get to go and everything like that. And also, if you aren't going to a, a structured meeting, if you're going to attend a town hall, Information on the town hall and how to engage in a town hall is there too. Finally, that document ends with an FAQ with some frequently asked questions that might crop up. Uh, and of course, we can go through some of those today as well. One thing that's new about our August recess initiative is our leadership initiative that we're trying out for the first time this year. So our August recess leadership initiative uh, seeks to help our ambassadors coordinate their efforts together um, and amplify their impact by sharing uh, their visits with a full team of other ambassadors that live in their congressional districts. Um, I, we spoke about this in our ambassador newsletter earlier this month, but what we're hoping for is for individuals from each of our states to sign up as leaders, um, and by doing so, you'll help to coordinate the volunteer efforts around our uh, August recess initiative broadly. So what happens when you sign up? If you sign up, we'll ask you a couple of questions. Are you, have you ever participated in August recess before? And that if you opt in, you are going to be expected to help uh, coordinate those visits. So you sign up as an August recess leadership leader, excuse me, um, and you'll receive an email from your state director, and the state director will include key details in that email. We'll go through those legislative asks, include links to all of our leave behind materials, and go through with some sample letters to guide you through communication that you can share with the members of our grassroots network that have been active in the past year that live in your congressional district. And I know that this might sound intimidating to coordinate a large group of people from your congressional district to go see uh, your member of Congress in their in-district office. But here are some things to take comfort in. Number one, if the it, you'll receive a list of active volunteers in your congressional district. And because congressional districts are so different, it's likely that that list will be kind of small. Some of our lists that we've pulled so far are five people long. Some of them are 20 people long. Um, but it's not an intimidating list. You're not going to send it to every person that signed up in your state, but just a small targeted group. When you send your letters, we have letters that you can use as a guide. So you just have to modify a draft letter. 
And as you go through the process, we'll be checking in with you every step of the way, and you'll receive support from your state director, you'll receive support from myself, in helping to make sure that you are getting all of the tools and resources that you need to help coordinate your group. Um, you can also participate in August recess without going with a group if, if you want to have an individual meeting. I don't want to discourage that, but we do want to help make sure that those visits are as amplified as possible. So what I ask is that if you are planning to participate in August recess at all, either as a leader or as a participant, please email me and we'll make sure that if there are others in your state that are participating and going to a district office that's nearby to yours, that maybe we can coordinate and, and share that visit together so that we can really help to make the message that we have as clear and loud and uh, strong as possible. So let's talk a little bit more about our strategy. When we're talking about August recess, there are a couple steps that we want to keep in mind. First off, we want to make sure that we know who the senators and representatives for your state are. And we want to know how they feel about our Arthritis Foundation priorities. So step therapy reform, ensuring children's access to specialty care, whether or not they're a member of our caucus, and if they are, all three of those, if they, haven't, if they have or have not yet signed on to our Patients uh, Access to Treatments Act. Those are our key questions that we want to ask of our elected officials. We also want to ask, where are their in-district offices? Are they close to my home? If it's anywhere further than an hour out, I don't know that I really want to drive that far. Um, so you can kind of strategize based on who your elected officials are, where their in-district offices are, and how they uh, interact with our key policies already to decide whether or not you really want to do an August recess visit. And it is our task for this month to do these visits, and what I would like to say is that um, if you're not planning to meet with an elected official from Congress during August because of limitations with the senators not coming home or uh, your representative's office being too far away, I do want to encourage you to replace the activity then by meeting with your state legislators just to raise awareness for arthritis, and if there is a priority issue in your state, we can discuss that broadly. So those are our key issues here. Um, and if you are engaging in the leadership initiative, the other background research that you'll receive from us is a, a short list of the local advocates and ambassadors who are in your same congressional district that you can reach out to in the hopes of coordinating with them. Um, as a quick reminder, you can always use our Find Legislation and Find Elected Officials tools on our Action Center to really dig in and understand if your members of Congress are co-sponsors of our key legislation. Simply add in the keywords on our legislation, so Ensuring Children's Access to Specialty Care Act, by pressing Go, or this arrow here, you'll be met with details and you can drop down and read all of the co-sponsors for the bill and see if your member of Congress is there. You can also find out who your elected officials are through this platform by simply typing in your zip code and maybe just the first line of your address. So to schedule an in-district visit, uh, we want to make sure that we call our local office and we want to be polite in our follow-up. We want to email our schedulers in the offices and we want to make sure that if we haven't heard back within a week's time that we're following up. In our legislative packet, we do provide draft phone scripts and draft emails that you can use to do this initial outreach. And then once you've scheduled your meeting, the hard work is done. The only thing I ask is that you reach out to our team so that our team knows when your meeting is and if there's another person who's hoping to meet in your state that we can help coordinate that they'll join your meeting with you. So if you are hoping to engage with the advocacy leadership initiative around August recess, uh, there are some things that you can do to help make sure that we're preparing with our volunteers as a team. So the first thing is to receive your information from your state director. If you have not received your information yet, uh, but you've signed up and opted into the program, you should expect to receive that information by the end of this week. That information is, again, everything from a deep dive description of our legislative asks, where you can find and print the leave behind materials, and of course, how, who the volunteers that you should contact are, how to contact them. As a quick teaser for that, it's essential that if we're contacting volunteers, that we blind copy them on the email, so BCC them, uh, so that we can protect their information and their identities. And then finally, you'll receive drafts for emails that you can send out, uh, and all of those supportive materials there. 
will send an initial e invite to that first list of people, whether it's skinny or large, <laughs> and see who's interested. They'll have to respond to you with an affirmative to say that they're interested. And then we can communicate with them either over email or over the phone if it's a small group. You can coordinate a conference call, and we're happy to help coordinate that with you uh, so that you can make sure that your team is ready for whatever meeting that you are going to have during August recess. So that covers our deep dive, and we have about five minutes left. So I'm going to quickly go over our July and August activities, look back on what we've done, what's ahead, and then we'll take some questions. So what we're hoping for is that you participate in August recess, either as a leader or a team member, either with member of con members of Congress or with your state legislators if Congress won't quite work. Um, if you are planning to participate and coordinate as a leader, you will be able to count your August recess activity as a monthly activity and also a bonus activity. Um, so as you're thinking about accomplishing your Platinum Ambassador Award, if you have some extra things that you would like to do or need to do to get quite to that level, this is a good way to accomplish it. Another task for this month is to share your story for Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month and participate in helping to promote RJA stories. We had a great blog come out on our advocacy blog this week about one of our junior ambassadors, Maya Miserlin, out in Colorado, and you can simply share that story with your friends on Facebook and encourage them to take action in the associated action alert at the bottom of that blog, and that will help to cross off your ambassador uh, task for this month. Another is to raise awareness for our, our accumulator adjustment programs by sharing our resources, so helping to share our Twitter chat, how earlier this month was particularly helpful, but we also have webinars and blogs and additional resources that you can share that will really help to bolster the awareness around accumulator adjustment programs. I encourage you to share about our insurance commissioner letters that we sent out earlier this week um, and help to raise awareness around the cause. Um, with that, I'm ready to open it up for questions and give you a heads up that our next briefing will take place on September 12th at 3 p.m. Eastern. You can register for that briefing simply by going to our current assignment tab on our website. I'm going to show you where that is quite really quickly just to make sure everybody knows and give you a brief Action Center demo. So if you come into the uh, advocacy webpage, if you're, this is our first uh, look-see here, and I'll wait, I'll do this while questions might come in. Um, if you click into the ambassador program and then click current ambassador assignment, this is where all of our important details live for our briefings. So you can see here, for instance, that if you click into our slides, you can see the PDF of today's slides. You can also see that you can register for the September 12th briefing right on our website, so you can put it on your calendar today. The other things that you can see are all of our resources for our different opportunities for this month. You can click in to all of our Leave Behind materials that you can click and print out for your members of Congress for August recess. And you can see more information about signing up for their, our leadership initiative right here. So this is a really good resource, and we're building this web page out, so it's going to look different uh, in the next ambassador season, ambassador year, so that it's really streamlined. We're hoping to host um, tabs that for each of our months here, that'll include the webinar recording, the advocacy activity, and also the reporting center all in one space so that you can have a one-stop shop for all of your ambassador activities. Um, I have one question here. Let me see. Uh, Yes, so if you are in the Southeast Territory, one question that we got is who should I be reaching out to or who should I expect to see a message from uh, for August recess? And that person is Michelle Guadalupe. So she'll be reaching out uh, and helping to coordinate any of those August recess questions. And if you have questions that you'd like to ask um, directly to me, feel free to reach out to me as well. Um, are there any other questions? Awesome. Well, with that, we're officially at 3.30, so I'll let you all go. Please stay on the line if you'd like to join us for our new ambassador orientation. Uh, and we're excited to have you all here, and thank you very much for participating. Appreciate it.